Hi everyone, I'm Ryan. Welcome back to my garage. So uh, having achieved compression in the engine last week, uh, I'm going to try and get it remounted in the frame and then move on to the electrics. So uh, wish me luck. So I think to begin with, I'm going to get the engine back in the frame. To do that, I'm going to take the wheels off the bike, put the engine on some blocks, drop the frame down onto it, try and bolt it up. So um, yeah, let's give that a go. Okay, the engine is back in the frame. So, now I'm going to start moving towards connecting up electrics, which I have not done before. So, um, the wiring loom I tried to repair some time ago, but it's never been connected. I don't know how it's meant to root. Um, I've just checked the Haynes manual, there's no clues in there. So I'm going to go through slowly and methodically trying to work out what connects to where, uh, including where do I mount these? Um, on the frame? Yeah, I know that. Um, <laughs> which orientation? No idea. Let's try and work that out. So, I've worked out the coil must go on the right hand side of the frame in this location here because if you look at the HT leads the one on the left is a lot longer so logically means it has to travel further so if the left hand coil HT lead is longer the coil must sit on the right hand side and that seems like everything lines up and the cables are the right length so I'm going to go with that and try and bolt that coil up into place on the frame. Okay, so with the coil bolted onto the only place it can logically go, because otherwise the HT leads don't reach, there is a short wire off the bottom of this, which clearly goes to the CDI unit. And the CDI is obviously has to be within this short distance, and so the logical place that the CDI unit must bolt onto then is this point here somehow. So I'm just going to work out the orientation of that from the other cables and then bolt that on. It put, does that fit up there? Yeah, it probably fits that way around. So um, I say that, I'm not sure. I'll experiment both ways and come to a determination. It will now follow a short interlude whilst I go and feed my dinner. Uh, Matt Green, if you ever watch this, um, uh, chicken curry. That's better. I'm definitely going to work better on a full stomach. I always do. Um, okay, let's carry on. Okay, I feel that's correct location and orientation for the CDI unit 
because frankly it seems to fit perfectly into that indentation in the frame so for that reason I'm confident that's the right way around the cable obviously stretches out the back and that appears to go off to uh, components over there as well so that feels right the coil feels right those reach so now I need to start working out what's the correct routing for the loom because I've brought it through on the right hand side and I've got a suspicion that's not correct um, well, having said that I've got an earthing point here which would go under there and I've got this connection that would go in there ah, probably is correct okay give that more thought right so I'm confident that's correct because the wiring loom's got an earthing point which would go onto that bolt there and there's this connection here which joins these wires up um, and so that feels correct to me as well this must be pointing in the right direction because these connectors go off down to the end so I'm pretty sure that wiring loom is on the correct side and the major components are in the right location what I don't know is where this goes it looks like it's to support wires um, possibly down here somewhere don't know um, we'll come back to that because that feels like that might be about right but um, don't know about that yet so for the moment leave that off and I'll continue trying to piece together the connections towards the back of the bike see if they uh, make sense Okay, so making some progress without uh, experiencing some complications. So I think this wiring loom's correct. I believe I've attached the wire coming out the engine. Um, it goes in, seems to clip into the bottom of this bracket here. So that seems correct. So the two out of the engine case plug in here. Um, the red wire um, here, which um, I fixed previously, is too short so it doesn't reach all the way down to that socket so I'm going to have to extend that um, and reattach it into the plug so there's my problem that I know is correct it's obvious it's it's red to red um, so that's I think I'm okay there I just need to extend this red wire and reattach it I've put this bracket here for now um, I don't think it's right but it feels like it's helpful to me and it feels like that's the sort of where the cables need supporting um, keep them off the exhaust uh, exhaust I'm being stupid that's the inlet but keep them out of the way um, I'm not sure about that yet when I work come around to the other side so these connections here are quite self-explanatory because they're all color coordinated so the yeah, the red and green goes to red and green and the yellow and red go to yellow and red so they're all I'm confident correct I've got a couple of leads here with no obvious connections which seems to be a black and a uh, yellow and green um, and a spare green over here so I'm going to go and refer to the wiring diagram see where they connect to um, it's possible that they go to like the rear brake or something because I just haven't connected that yet so that might just be a brake switch but then I get to the bigger complication so I've got this thick heavy duty um, what I think is a ground cable I believe that bolts onto the side of the engine so I've put that there I need to tighten it but I put it there and then I've got this positive feed off of what I guess is a relay but is that the only positive feed it seems to me I would expect more than that maybe that's it maybe it's that simple um, and then obviously you've got the, another connection off the relay which presumably should go to the starter motor but then I've got my other problem of this cable is just being cut off so I think I need to get some more cable extend this back probably over the frame and back down to this terminal and now I don't know, 
Am I there? Is that it? I don't know. Let's stop. Continuing and trial and error. Okay, will be attached. So that connector is down there. Red. So those four connectors are all on. So I think this side's good to go. Well, I don't have the cable that goes from the starting solenoid through to the starter motor at the front. And uh, this is definitely not the right way to do it. But because it's late and I'm getting impatient to try to see if I get anything, I'm going to take a 13 amp mains cable, take all three cores and just twist them all together to try and give me something which stands half a chance of carrying the uh, ampage of the starting motor. So um, I'm going to put this in place, just for tonight at least. It's a definite bodge that I'm not proud of, but 13 amp cable, all three cores down, twisted onto the uh, lead of the starter motor. So uh, it might not be enough to start it, but it should be at least enough to tell me if it's trying. Now I think I need to get positive, negative onto these two terminals, and um, let's see if anything happens. The one question I had was, should there only be a single positive feed? And the book appears to confirm that yes there is. Just a single feed off the battery into the starter solenoid, and then it comes off from one, two, three connections off the positive, which are yellow, red, green, red, and red. And those are that, that, and what appears to be these. So I think I've got all the connections in place I need. So the very first um, test of the electrics, I've connected up a 12 volt battery, just on some jump, jump leads, they're connected up here onto the negative and the positive, so um, let's see what happens when I turn on the ignition. Okay. Neutral sign, let's try lights, nope, nope, indicators, no, no flashing, horn, that's not horn connected, okay, so outward signs, no life whatsoever, <laughs> don't know why I expected anything different, okay, let's start diagnosing, so I'm trying to test this, if I test it on the feed in, I'm getting 13, yeah, 13 point something volts. Follow it down now, the cable, follow it to that point there. Yeah, 13 volts. Follow it 
out of this terminal here. So in theory now it should come up this cable and go into the back of these. Yep. And that one. Yep. Across this connector. Into the back. Thirteen. Yep. And the back of the other connector. Yep. Thirteen. Okay. So this section's fine. Up here's fine. Into those red cables are fine. Let's uh, get the book out and trace those. So tracing the red wire here, I've got the voltage, it comes down here, along, down, and it comes into the fuse. So let's, uh, let's find the fuse box, see what we've got there. Okay, so I've disconnected the battery, and let's just quickly check for continuity across these fuses. Yep. 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 Okay. Reconnect the battery and check for voltage. Okay, so that red wire splits. One side goes to the voltage regu regulator rectifier, and I've got 13 volts there. So that side is good. The other side says it comes into the back of these fuses. But that, to me, is showing no voltage at all. So have I got a bad connection or a broken cable? Dunno. Okay, so the other red cable comes around here into the back of this plug. It goes off to the fuses. And that one I've got voltage on. So I've got voltage coming in there, but if it's coming in there, why is it not making its way up to these fuses? Bad connection in there, I think. So, I'm trying to check continuity from that pin there. It should be, yep. So we get, we get a beep when we test. problem somewhere. So testing this, not getting continuity across it, so I've just removed it, taken it out, and look what I found. That will be why I've got no power. Okay, let's see if we can't sort that out. Am I dead? That one to that one. I don't get a beep, I get high resistance reading. So I've got, oh, here we go. So that one's okay. This one, the final one, is not connected. So, I'm going to deep in that, reconnect it, give it another test. Well, Deepening this is not an option because what's just come out is just dissolved green nothing so um yeah that's gone so um I'll have to find a new pin to go in that I think right I'm going to try and harvest a female connector out of here interestingly there's already one that's basically snapped off so I'm not making it any worse presumably that was originally connected to there um so I'll just uh, try and get that pin out as carefully as I can. Good. All right, so that's reattached. Okay. 
put it back. For continuity now. So we're going from that point there to one of these. There we go. So let's reconnect the battery and check the voltage. Yeah, 13.6, 13.6, 13.6. Okay, we have some progress. I'll put the ignition on now. We have light. We have working headlight. Whoa, hey. Some progress. Not a lot, but some. No indicators here. Passing. That works. Horn's not connected. Got a horn. Good morning, I'm back, another day, and I'm going to carry on trying to sort this out. So, uh, okay, let's see if we can't make some progress now. So I've just had a Halloween cupcake delivered for my wonderful wife, wondering where I've been all weekend. And, um, yeah, spark plug and multimeters and cups of tea, definitely necessary for this week. Okay, so as we've left it, I've got a battery connected, we now have some working lights and progress. We have a working low oil pressure light. Um, don't know what I've done to fix that because I didn't intentionally do anything that should have made a difference. However, that's good, that's progress. And hopefully the headlights are still working. Yes, headlights, good. Good, good, good. Right, so, lights off again. Although interestingly, if I put the lights on and do high beam, I don't appear to have a blue light indicating high beam. So that's something that I thought should have worked. So I'm gonna now trace um, the electrics because if I push the start button, nothing. So, why not? Don't know. Okay, so back to the manual. It tells me that the starter switch is a pretty simple affair with the feed coming off here on yellow red so I'm going to try and find that and see if I get any um, detected movement or voltage when I push the starter button so I found the yellow and red it's there in the back of this um, red connector so I'm going to put the probe in there, measuring that so I've got no voltage, and I'm going to push the starter button. There we go, 12 point something, off, on. Okay, so my starter button's working. Now let's try tracing that wire which presumably go back down towards the starting circuit. So yes, it's this yellow and red which comes in on this connector here down into the solenoid. So if I put my probe in here and I push the starter button there, I get 12 volts. Off, on, off. So I've got voltage coming down on the signal wire into the solenoid. Why is that doing nothing? Was it solenoid? Is it a relay, actually? No, it must be a relay. Actually, I'm not sure. Right, I'll check. Okay, so that took a lot of tracing. 
Um, but interestingly, this wire here on the diagram, which comes off, goes down here, is marked as green and red. And when you trace that all the way down here, and keep going and keep going and keep going, I think it's that one, it comes down here to something described as clutch switch. And so I'm thinking that is a switch which provides the ground to the solenoid. I need to check that. So yes, this bike has a clutch switch. Two cables on it. No idea if the switch works, but if I check continuity to the green to earth, I get the beat. So that's earthed, and that one isn't. So now I need to connect either bridge them to test it or actually I need to test the connections on the back here and see whether putting the clutch lever in or out has any effect on that switch. Okay, so the little tiny micro switch in here which goes in and out with the clutch lever was gunged up and stuck in which was why it wasn't providing, uh, it wasn't working. So now I've cleaned it up, the switch appears to be working and so let's give that another try. Okay, so oil light, start a button. She's turning over, she's turning over on the key, on the button. Okay, it's taken several hours and three faults, but we're making progress. Wait, right, now I need to get a stronger battery and um, see if we can get a spark out of her. Okay, now let's try my luck. Let's see if we can get any spark. I think that's probably asking far too much, but we'll give it a go. Alright, so we're looking just the ignition on, clutch, and start them. I've got a bloody spark! Wow! Did not expect that. Had spark a second ago. Why not now? Had spark though. Uh, one second. Hmm. Definitely had it. Hey up. We got spark. <laughs> We've only got spark. Okay. Okay. Let's try the other side. See if we've got spark over here as well. Whew. Working spark. Oh dear. I am stunned. Absolutely stunned. Very happy, but stunned. Um, fuel! Hey! <laughs> so I appear to have just worked out that if you take one of the spark plugs out, it doesn't spark. You only need both spark plugs attached to the HT leads, then it sparks. Um, not sure why, maybe it's a resistance thing, but either way, it's good. Great cleaner, highly flammable, excellent, that's what we want. Makes any difference. Well she popped a bit. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> Oops, little fire. Proves there's spark though. Needed a bigger battery. Jump start off the car. That'll be alright. getting interesting and then I had to beat a hasty retreat because uh, the heavens opened and it started raining so me and the bike got wet um, okay so I think we're really close to getting something that resembles a run even if it was only going to be for seconds it was uh, popping it was firing but just not running um, I need to move ahead with fuel uh, to that end I've got carburetors which um, I've got here so, I've got the carbs, they haven't been stripped or cleaned yet, um, so that's something that I should do, I know. I was trying to put them straight on the bike just to see if they did anything, but these are the condition of my rubbers, which are not only broken, but also I've got no movement or flex in them whatsoever, they're like concrete. So unless I try and bodge something together here, um, these are going to prevent me from putting the carbs on the bike today. So I'm going to work out how to attach the carbs to the bike. I'm going to get a stronger battery source so we can turn it over better. And um, who knows, maybe in a week or so we can actually go for a fire. Um, look, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your encouragement, your helps, your tips. They've all been really very much re well received. Um, so please do like, subscribe to this channel, completely free, helps me tremendously and um, let's keep going on this journey together. Thank you very much, bye for now.